Hey everyone, and welcome to Starting Personas and Their Meanings, the Persona 4 episode. In this series, I will be talking about the lore and importance of each party member's starting persona throughout every single Persona game. The starting personas of your party hold great meaning to the characters and draw parallels to the individual throughout the story. I've always appreciated the thought that went into deciding the best mythological or historical figure that was suited for your party member that you'll be spending the rest of the adventure with. This series aims to explain the importance of these choices. In this video, we'll be going in-depth over Persona 4's cast of playable characters and their unique starting personas. Also, a special guest starring in every video. Stay tuned. First up, the king himself, Yu Narukami. Yu's starting persona is Izanagi of the Fool Arcana. Usually, I do a little summary for the character myself, but I don't think I can top the game in this regard, so I'll be quoting directly from Mr. Edogawa, the Japanese creation myth. The two gods who gave birth to this country are the god Izanagi and the goddess Izanami. They got along very well, but one day Izanami died while giving birth to Kagutsuchi, the fire god. Extremely saddened by this, Izanagi left for the land of the dead to bring back Izanami. Yomi, the dark underworld. There, Izanagi asked Izanami, who had become a dweller of the land of shadows, to come back with him to the land above. The goddess replied by saying she would negotiate with the god of the underworld, and asked Izanagi to wait for her. However, Izanagi became curious to know what was going on, so he broke his promise and set his comb alight to have a look around. What he saw was the goddess Izanami whose body was completely covered in filth and maggots. Terrified, Izanagi ran away, but the enraged Izanami chased after him. After dodging the many demons sent after him, Izanagi reached the entrance of the underworld, Yomotsu Hirasaka. He set in place a large boulder as a barrier between the two worlds and got away unharmed. When the dreadful goddess reached the boulder, he said his farewell to her. Izanami said to the god, If you're going to treat me this way, I will kill 1,000 humans in your world each day. Izanagi regretfully accepted the bonds between them were severed, saying, Then I shall give life to 1,500 each day. Well, that is a doozy. The story seems to run contrary to the point of the game, that being creating bonds, but it also is a story about acceptance. Izanami has passed away, and Izanagi could not accept the truth. Even gods are not safe from the consequences of rejecting reality, and Izanagi saw the horror of Izanami. Luckily, he got out before it was too late. He was cursed, but he strived forward and made the best out of a bad situation. As you, you are also thrust into a horrible situation, but when faced with a difficult journey, you mustn't shy away. Izanagi's design is really nothing like his source material with his long black coat and ice skate boots. The Persona has a metal helmet and a cod piece as well, which are, um, nice touches. The only thing this design has in common with the historical depictions is the weapon, which one could assume is a Naginata of sorts, with Izanagi often being depicted wielding one. Definitely an iconic Persona. Yosuke Hanamura, Juness's golden boy. His Persona is Jiraiya, not that one, of the Magician Arcana. Jiraiya is the protagonist of the Japanese folktale, The Tale of Gallant Jiraiya. Jiraiya is a ninja who uses shape-shifting magic to transform into a toad. He was the heir to the powerful Ogata clan and fell in love with a beautiful young woman named Tsunade, who mastered slug magic. Jiraiya's arch-enemy, though, was his once follower known as Orochimaru, master of serpent magic. Wait a minute, this is sounding pretty familiar. The story itself goes over Jiraiya and Tsunade's quest to retrieve the Namikiri Maru sword, to exercise the demonic influence over his once trusted friend and avenge the unjust slaying of their families. Jiraiya suffers much loss on his journey, even his long lost sister, and confronts Orochimaru many times only to be subverted by his magic time and time again. Eventually though, he retrieves the mystical sword and with his influence transforms Orochimaru back into his human form and even suggests a pardon for him in the face of a very angry shogunate lord. A standout excerpt from the tale is the Chinese wise man's words, A toad is more powerful than a slug, a slug is more powerful than a snake, and a snake is more powerful than a toad. When all three meet, none can be the victor. Yosuke from the very beginning of the story struggles with his circumstances with his family and is inadvertently thrust into the middle of a horrible situation with his crush Saki Konishi being murdered. His quest may not be to retrieve a mystical sword, but the strive to solve the case pushes him to be the first to join the investigation team. 
Yosuke, despite his quirks, is by far the most responsible and committed member of the team, planning almost every outing and being the first to call you when there's something new airing on the Midnight Channel. The journey takes him through twists and turns, but when faced with what he feels is the true killer, Namatame, he sees red. With your help, he sees reason and chooses a more peaceful option, and by the end of the game, he fully resembles the tale of Jiraiya. Just less toads. The design of Jiraiya follows the same pattern as Izanagi, that is to say it's completely different from the source material. He wears a full white jumpsuit with camouflage patterns on the end of his pants and gloves. Golden shurikens are implanted on his hands and eyes, as well as a golden, what seems to be a smile on his lapel. The red scarf flows nicely when the persona is summoned, as well as gives more color to the persona. The eyes and hands of Jiraiya are reminiscent of the eyes and webbed feet of a toad though, which is a nice touch. His shoe game is also on point. Hold up. Chie Satonaka, the carnivore karate champ. Her persona is Tomoe of the Chariot Arcana. Tomoe Gozen was a female samurai in the Genpei War circa 1180 to 1185. She commanded 300 samurai against a rival clan, 2,000 warriors strong, and was victorious. The enemy forces mounted though, and she was eventually overwhelmed while protecting her lord Yoshinaka. Yoshinaka, seeing the imminent defeat, told Tomoe to flee, as he would be ashamed to die with a woman. Tomoe's exploits have varied accounts, such as at the Battle of Owazu in 1184. She beheaded the Musashi clan general Hondo no Morishige and evaded capture to present his head to her master Yoshinaka, which dangled on the side of her horse like a witcher trophy. In fact, she was known for collecting severed heads, which on horseback would probably take considerable skill beheading everybody you meet. It is said in the tale of the Haike, Tomoe was especially beautiful, with white skin and long hair, and charming features. She was also a remarkably strong archer, and as a swordswoman, she was a warrior worth a thousand, ready to confront a demon or a god. Chie and Tomoe seem like a perfect match to me. From that description alone, it's obvious the similarities. Chie is not widely known for her intelligence, but she has all the qualities of a warrior. Training non-stop and being the first to put herself in harm's way for others. I mean, she fights physical manifestation of humanity's evil with nothing but her kicks. If that isn't bravery and skill, I don't know what is. Chie's rise to the occasion from being a regular high school student to shadow hunting machine mirrors Tomoe as well, considering Tomoe was just another of her master's female attendants before becoming a legendary warrior. Tomoe's design is an obvious homage to Bruce Lee's iconic yellow and black jumpsuit. Her waist is lined with armor reminiscent of the armor mounted samurai would wear during the war, and she carries a double-edged thousand-degree naginata. She has a large helmet with lipstick covering her face, with a yin-yang symbol emblazoned on the sides. An awesome design that reflects Tomoe and Chie's characters. Yukiko Amagi, the giggling heiress. Her persona is Konohana Tsukuya, of the Priestess Arcana. Konohana Tsukuya is the goddess of Mount Fuji and all volcanoes, as well as the Blossom Princess, with her symbol being the Sakura. Konohana Tsukuya met Ninigi, the god responsible for rice and order in Japan, and they fell in love. On the night of their marriage, Tsukuya became pregnant, causing suspicion from Ninigi. He accused his wife of infidelity, to which Tsukuya was enraged and entered a doorless hut. She then set the hut on fire, proclaiming that her child would not be hurt if it was truly the offspring of Ninigi. Inside that hut, three sons were born, and she emerged unscathed. Not exactly mother of the year material, but maybe smoke inhalation doesn't affect gods. Yukiko's story doesn't share the same material as Tsukuya, but the overall takeaway is the same. Be secure in yourself, and never lose sight of the truth. Tsukuya was honest with herself, and instead of running away from a difficult situation, proved her innocence. Yukiko throughout the story has a hard time finding what she wants to accomplish in life, and coming to terms with her title as the next manager in line at the Amagi Inn also causes endless strife. Her castle shows she is incredibly fearful due to the weight of the situation, feeling smothered by the responsibility of having her life set out for her. Ultimately, she must face herself rather than an incredulous lover, but she does have a trial by fire. Konohana Sukuya's design is a nice homage to the official symbol of her source material. The Sakura flower and its signature white and pink colors are all over her design. The chains connected on both hands are lined with long pink Sakura petals with a flower on each bracelet. Her helmet is also lined with the Sakura chaplet. Sakura's clothing is reminiscent of Yukiko's uniform with the skirt and leggings and pink shirt with a white heart on the breast. 
It's fitting she's the goddess of volcanoes. Yukiko does go into explosive laughter. Kanji Tatsumi, the manliest seamstress. His persona is Take Mikazuchi of the Emperor Arcana. Take Mikazuchi is the deity of thunder in Japanese mythology. He was born after Izanagi cut off the head of the fire deity Kagatsuchi, who you might remember as Izanagi's son, and his blood stained the rocks and gave birth to several deities. In his most famous story, Take Mikazuchi was sent down from the realm of heaven to subjugate the earthly deities. Take Mikazuchi got there with Ame no Torifune, which is a boat and a god, and attempted to peacefully convince Oki Ninushi to relinquish the province to him, which he deferred the judgment to his child, Take Minakata. Take Minakata would not hand over the province to just anyone, and wanted to test Take Mikazuchi's strength, to which they had the first sumo match. This promptly resulted in Minakata's hands being crushed and turned into ice. Bruh. How a thunder god does that? I'm not sure. Don't worry though, Minakata relinquished the land and later became a guardian god. A pretty violent tale when relating to Kanji, but I think we can draw some parallels. To me, Kanji's story is all about understanding oneself. Not just his palace's obvious themes, but in terms of strength as well. Throughout Kanji's life, he's felt the need to prove himself to others and yet make no effort in making them understand. Understanding his true self. Take Mikazuchi's first inclination when he got to the middle country was not to commit wanton murder, but to peacefully take over. Only when forced did he resort to violence and even then did not kill. Kanji over the course of the game comes to understand the value of restraint and communication, as it could avoid many unwanted conflicts, though he still isn't the best with words. Take Mikazuchi's design is a large mechanical android looking automaton with a skeleton motif on the front. Wires connect the arms, and it looks to be clad in armor with a tiny head. He also wields a comically sized lightning bolt as a weapon, I suppose to match the equally comical chair Kanji uses in battle. Electricity and robots are an understandable connection, but not much to do with the original Kami. He is a great drummer though, worthy of thunderous applause. Risei Kujikawa, the XX Idol Icon. Her persona is Himiko of the Lover's Arcana. Himiko was a shaman queen of the Yamatai Koku in the islands that would come to be known as Japan. From early sources, the people of the country agreed to elect a woman as their ruler, which was once ruled by a man for many decades. This rise to power ended the prior leader's civil unrest and warfare. Himiko focused on magic and sorcery, which at the time earned her great respect. She lived in a beautiful palace and had a thousand female attendants, but only one man who served as her means of communication outside said palace, as well as many guards, of course. Her reign was extremely strict and vigilant, leading to years of peace. Himiko also made great connections with the neighboring kingdom of Wei, which earned her the nickname Ruler of Wa, Friend of Wei. Upon her passing, the people of Yamatai Koku would not obey or respect the new king's laws, and would only be placated by one of Himiko's relatives taking the throne, who just so happened to be a 13-year-old girl. Himiko may also not even be a real historical figure, depending on which historical source you read. Risei's persona was most likely chosen to represent her backline support role for the investigation team. Himiko's incredibly popular yet reclusive role as leader of her people may also allude to Risei's idol persona and how she felt the real her was locked away from the outward appearance of Reset. Even her 13 year old as a successor is reminiscent of Risei and Kanamin. Over time though, Risei understood her importance. Whether behind a screen or communicating with people, much as Himiko's attendants must have come to love her as much as her subjects. Himiko as a persona has a unique space telescope or satellite-like design for her face made of gold through the back of her head. She also wears long flowing white robes much like shamans were known to wear in those ancient historical times. The persona also holds a gold seal which is in reference to the golden seal with purple ribbon she received from the kingdom of Wei as thanks for her loyalty and filial piety. An amazing design that complements the source material well. Teddy, the hollow suit filled with heart and heat. His persona is Kintoki Doji of the Star Arcana. Kintoki Doji is the name the legendary figure Kintaro took once he reached adulthood. Also known as the Golden Boy, he was a Japanese folk hero and man of superhuman strength raised by a mountain witch. Exact sources of Kintaro's birth are hard to come by, but what all accounts share is that even as a toddler he had endless stamina, incredible strength, and only wore a bib with the kanji for gold written on it hence the nickname Golden Boy. 
Quintaro was friend to all animals in his home mountain, and was even said to be able to communicate with them. After a life of having fun with animals, helping the local woodcutters, and smashing Oni into dust, he ran into the samurai Minamoto no Yorimitsu after his passing through the area of Mount Kintoki. Yorimitsu was so impressed with Kintaro's enormous strength that he took him as one of his personal retainers to live in Kyoto. There, he changed his name to Kintoki Doji and studied martial arts to eventually become the chief of Yorimitsu's four braves, known far and wide for his strength and martial prowess. Eventually, he came back to the mountain and brought his mom back to live with him in Kyoto as well. What a nice guy. Teddy shares many parallels to the story of Kintoki Doji. He lived in a land not inhabited by many, then acclimated to a new land, helping those in need as he went. Despite having strange powers and an alien form, Teddy is integral to the plot of Persona 4, and it all kicks off once he deems the protagonist as his sensei, making you his Yorimitsu. Teddy's just lacking the superhuman strength part. Kintoki's persona design is that of a red spherical metal ball lined with gold, in reference to his common symbol of a red bib with the kanji for gold written on it. The center of his body looks like a vault as well, possibly alluding to his transformation to another form through the game. The missile is often something that confuses people, but this is most likely in reference to Kintoki Doji's iconic tomahawk, which he uses as a tool to help woodcutters and a weapon for fighting Oni. In his persona, it's depicted as a tomahawk missile. The blue cape is an additional flair, but may be a slight reference to the tale of the young Kitaro fighting a giant carp. Maybe that's a stretch though. Overall, a nice design, with more than meets the eye. So Tony asked me if I wanted to do the segment for my favorite Persona 4 character. And since I don't actually like any of them, I went for the one who has at least more than a quarter of a brain cell on cat. Naoto Shirogane, the detective with an online following about as sane as that one Turkish man yelling at an egg. Her persona is Sukana Hikona, Japanese dwarf deity of healing, brewing sake, and knowledge. His name roughly translates to small lord of renown. His full name is Suka Hikona no Kami, and he is often associated with hot springs and paired with Okuninushi, whom he helped building the world and formulating protections against disease and wild animals. He first arrived in Izumo in a small boat of bark and clad in goose skins, where, after being picked up by Okuninushi, Tsukahikona promptly bit him on the cheek. However, they quickly became friends. He died after climbing onto a millet stalk that rebounded and threw him into the Tokyoyo no Kuni, the land of eternity. While on the surface this doesn't seem to have much to do with Naoto as a character, there are quite a few similarities. For one, him biting Okuninushi's cheek only to become his best friend could be seen in the same way as Naoto's initial adversity toward the investigation team, only to then open up to them. His title of Small Lord of Renown can also be seen as a reflection of Naoto's insecurity toward her size despite her intelligence. And much like Tsukahikona helped Okuninushi in protecting people against the evil diseases of the unwashed British masses, so does Naoto help Scooby and the mystery crew against the murders. The persona itself, however, doesn't make nearly as much sense, at least not design-wise. Instead of looking like your average Danish person, he instead takes on the form of a common rider inspired butterfly using an off-brand toy lightsaber they found for free bucks at a local Spencer's Gifts. He wears a blue suit with big yellow buttons that is quite reminiscent of another pocket-sized detective by the name of Conan, just with a yellow cravat instead of a red fly, which fits in with Naoto's character of being an overlooked genius detective due to her height. He also wears black and white striped pants that look like they must be incredibly uncomfortable to wear, and for some reason he also wears what looks like hiking shoes, which may be in reference to him being a dwarf in the folklore, but it's not like he'd ever get a use out of them anyway considering he keeps flying all the time. Which is all fine by me, don't, uh, don't misunderstand, I don't want to know what butterfly toes look like. On top of that, he also cannot learn any healing magic, which is... Pretty weird considering he's a deity of healing, but all things considered, this is still one of Seijima's better persona designs and I like it. Oh, and also, the Yukino inspired costume here now to get a Persona 4 Arena gets a double thumbs up from me. Alright, uh, thanks for coming on to talk about my favorite game and my favorite character. Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. Just make sure you bring me on with an actually good game next time, alright? Oh boy. Alright, that covers the whole investigation team. Leave a comment letting me know your favorite member's persona down below. And while you're there, like and subscribe.
My favorite character is Naoto, as I said, but I must say Tomoe is such a cool historical figure, riding into battle just cleaving the heads off everyone left and right. Big shout out to VKHC for helping me out with this video. His channel will be linked in the pinned comment below. Go check him out. Every episode will have a guest on it, so stay tuned to find out who's on the Persona 3 video. This video was a lot harder to make than the Persona 5 one, since the lore was mostly based on Japanese folklore and, as you know, I'm Canadian. Needless to say, it was interesting to do research for. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next Tony for You. Have a good one.